Hello everyone, my name is Droogie Forever, and today we are playing Home, a unique horror adventure. But we are playing the new Post-Mortem Edition. This came out today on the Nintendo Switch. Benjamin Rivers, who I've mentioned a couple times, is my favorite indie developer. He has added a developer's commentary to this, and it's not like he talks through the whole thing. You actually have to click on the points, like in Gone Home. So if you ever played the developer commentary part of Gone Home, you had to walk around and actually like click on these bubbles. It's like that in this. It's super cool. It's super interesting. And we're going to play through the whole game and uh, listen to some developer commentary on the way. So I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Let's, uh, let's get started. Here we go. This is one of my favorite indie games of all time. It's so good. Yes, enable. Enable developer commentary. All I remembered at that point was finding myself alone. Oh. Oh, my head. Where was I? It was so dark. There was something by my feet. A flashlight. There we go. First, uh... Welcome to post-mortem mode. You'll find these hotspots all over the game, as long as this mode is enabled. They'll give you behind-the-scenes clues as to how the game works and what we were thinking when we made it. So here's your first tip. Home was created as a design exercise to prove that a creepy, thought-provoking horror game could be done with simple 2D graphics. Our theory was that players bring 50% of the experience with them, and if we got them thinking, they'd really use their imaginations. I guess we were right. Home quickly became a hit. Even today, people still contact us to ask questions or to tell us their theories of what is going on. If you want to turn this mode off, you can do so at any time by pausing the game and going into the options menu. Thanks, Benjamin. That house. Where was I? There was a body lying on the floor. Who was it? That cat sound is one of the first sound effects we put in the game. It's also a sound I use as a debug test. So I've heard that cat meow thousands of times since Home was first released. <laughs> We're not going down the stairs, man. Let's look around. See the leak? Ah, this game's so good. The desk had a computer and some papers on it and a single drawer. I didn't want to snoop, but did I open the drawer? Yeah, why not? Receipts, pens, and a blurry photo. Looked like a store of some kind. Why did this look so familiar? Blood on the wall. It smelled fresh and sickening. I realized there was blood on my shoes and pants. Oh man, I had to get out of there. Let's go. Let's get out of here. It's too creepy! Run! Run! I noticed that I limped as I moved down the stairs. How did I hurt my leg, I wondered. All I could really recall was coming home, seeing Rachel. I was upset. She looked afraid. I shook my head and tried to clear it. I knew I should head downstairs, try to find a way out. A thin gray mouse was stuck in a trap. It looked frantic, but exhausted. Did I free it? Yeah, we'll free the mouse. And here's the developer so commentary. this mouse is put here to give the player their first optional choice. If you save the mouse, it appears in the kitchen below. If you don't, it dies. We wanted to teach the player to start paying attention. I'm paying attention, Benjamin. A collection of rusty tools. These looked like they'd seen a lot of use and were caked in damp smelling dirt. Why weren't they in a shed? Because we were using them. I found a picture of a couple. It looked like it had been moved a lot. There seemed to be a switch behind it. Did I push the switch? It depressed smoothly into the wall. I heard a faraway click somewhere. Yeah, <clears throat> I think we need to push that to unlock a door later, if I remember correctly, so may as well push it. We'll go down the stairs in a minute. 
The shelf was full of books on local history and hunting. Seemed like the owner of the house really knew the area. Oh yeah, and sometimes if you click on them twice, I forgot to show you guys this, there were scribbles of all kinds on random scraps of paper, notes about some kind of water tower. Did he mean the one by the old train yard? Yeah, so that's something interesting that I totally forgot to mention at the beginning of this. If you click on things twice, he often he says something different. An old dining table covered in dirty dishes for two people. There were dozens of beer cans and other liquor bottles. I almost said liqueur. Liquor bottles among the dishes. The smell was turning my stomach. How long had this been here? Rotting. The man upstairs didn't look like he'd been dead a long time. A black and white photo. Looked like the man upstairs and his wife, I guessed. There was no reason for me to keep this. Did I take it? No. I figured this was no help to me, so I left it behind. Benjamin River. Old Man River. No, I'm just kidding. He's not old. I looked like hell. My clothes were dirty and torn. There was mud caked all over my shoes. Had I been sleepwalking again? Was that how I got to that house? The bathroom was incredibly clean. Every surface had been thoroughly wiped. Nothing seemed out of place. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to clear my throat. There was a photo development tray lying on the floor. Some leftover negatives were sticking out, but they were pretty blurry. I thought I saw what looked like treetops. It seemed odd that the tray had been left there, considering how clean, clean the rest of the bathroom was. The front door was blocked by a pile of furniture. I knew I had to find another way out. Alright, alright, alright. Are jump scares cheap? I'm not so sure. The point of these sound triggers was to keep players on edge and to build dread. We wanted to make you nervous as you were walking around, wondering if something terrible was going to happen. The door was taped up and seemed to be stuck. By the smell, I guessed it led to the kitchen. I gave the door a hard shove, and to my surprise, it cracked open. I want to do the developer commentary. This room was added six months after the launch of the original version of Home. The door actually takes two tries because originally... It never opened at all. We wanted people to replay the game and be surprised when they discovered new things. Also, we saw the mouse pop up down there. Because we saved it. There were sheets of paper all over the kitchen table. It looked like a series of names were written down, but they were too smudged to read. I could only make out a few of the notes. Keycard, locker, last one, I promised. It didn't make much sense at the time. The smell of old dishes and moldy food was dizzying. The switch in the wall appeared to have unlocked the door. Yes, it did. Oh, wait. Hold on. Uh, no. Hold on. Okay, I wanted to make sure there was nothing over there. The box looked heavy, but there were marks on the floor. It had obviously been moved before. Maybe I found a way out. I must have moved it, right? I heaved the box forward and it finally gave. There was a ladder going underground where the box was. A dank smell rose from the passage. Did I climb down? Of course we did. My leg hurt like hell as I climbed down that ladder. The tunnel below was even darker, and the smell wasn't getting any better. But I had to get out of there and find my way home. Home... Footprints in the dirt looked like more than one kind and a lot of traffic. Whatever this place was, it was obviously used a lot. Places all over were marked on the old map of town. The industrial area near the river, various houses, and even the water tower near the old rail station. The guy upstairs must have done this, but what was his interest in the water tower? Some of the markings matched the scribbles I saw on the bookshelf upstairs. Newspaper clippings from the local paper. They were all about murders in town over the last few years. Wait. There were photos. Photos of our house. What the hell was that about? Maybe I should have looked around more, tried to find some kind of information. 
we wanted to make sure players knew that picking up items wasn't always a good thing. And the way this is written is supposed to cause players to reconsider every item they see. Normally in games, guns are considered good things, but we wanted to show you right away that you might want to reconsider that. A work table covered in paper, dirt, and a handgun. I hated guns. I didn't take it, did I? No. Didn't even want to touch the thing. Better I left it right where it was. It was so dark down there and the air smelled stale and putrid. I couldn't believe what I saw. What was this place? The desk looked old and was caked with grime. On it was a stack of old, faded paper covered with what looked like names. They were scratched out and illegible notes were written beside them in faded blue ink. I could only make out a few letters. None of it made any sense to me. Nothing about Rachel or me was written there. Maybe I needed to keep looking. There looked to be bones half dug into the ground, and the remains looked old. Who put them there? I wondered what would I have found if I had dug deeper. I don't know, man. Some kind of homemade rack slung together with poorly cut wood and rope. It was caked with old blood. Somebody didn't actually use that, did they? The smell in that room was like old grease and rot. I wasn't getting any closer to finding anything useful. Rusted hooks, like the kind you'd find in a butcher, hung from the ceiling. They looked pitted and worn from heavy use. That man upstairs, did he do this? I was getting more nauseated the longer I stayed there. I felt sick and weak, like I hadn't eaten for days. Crudely made shelves. They looked like they were holding cans of some kind of corrosive. The labels were worn and slick, but I could still see the warnings. The slight fumes that still emanated from the cans made me dizzy. It looked like a cage? It was small, but there was something coating the bottom, something wet. That place was getting worse all the time. I knew I had to keep moving. Some kind of old boxes. They looked like they were years old. Wait, wait a minute. These boxes had old clothes in them. Clothes I remembered throwing out after Rachel and I moved to town. What the hell were they doing there? If I was scared before, I was terrified now. Why were there photos of our house there? And these clothes, was that why I was here? There, sorry. I checked my back pocket and realized my wallet was missing. Did I come to that house or did somebody bring me? Oh, sorry. Okay, I already read it twice. Where are they at? There they are. Yeah, trigger the bats. To be honest, I don't even know why these bats are here. <laughs> Probably because creepy bats that fly at you seem like a good horror idea. If you trigger the bats here, you'll see them again later on in the game. That's at, another example of a setup and a payoff. <clears throat> at the water tower, right? I remember noticing the broken ladder. I had to be careful. We'll come back to it then. Oh wait. No, no, we'll come back to it. I think we need we'll get the rope. There was a rope hanging there. I wasn't sure how sturdy it was. Did I take it? Maybe the rope would make that broken ladder easier to descend. Look at that. I had the rope. No, okay. Yeah. Yep, let's climb down. I could hear a faint hum, and the smell from before started to get worse. I could smell it. No, Choosing to use the rope was a smart move. Otherwise, you'd be limping for the entire game. It also makes a pathway later on easier to access. Nice. I talked to Ben and he said that does change. If you don't use the rope to come down, you'll get a different commentary block there. A bunch of old newspapers, wheat pasted together. A message had been hastily smeared on it. Keep out. Danger due to cave-in. I wanted nothing more than to get out of there. My hands tingled from the burn of sliding down that rope. It was lucky I found that. Who knows what would have happened if I had jumped down. 
Still, it was all I could do to not have rushed out of that awful place. That rack, those terrible tools. What the hell was going on back there? The metal door groaned as I leaned into it, causing my heart to skip a beat at the sound. As I peered ahead into the dark of the next room, I worried that I should have taken that gun I saw, but me? With a gun? An exposed ventilation shaft. Maybe someone crawled through there. But it was so high up, that must have been a sore landing. My leg ached just thinking about it. Okay, so hear that overbearing droning sound? Keep paying attention. I'll explain again in the next area what we're doing here. There was dirt on the ground. It looked wet, and there was grass smeared within it. Odd, there was similar dirt on my own shoes. I could hear a faint trickling sound, like water. What was that? Oh, I forgot I, I could go through here. Um, there was a rusty ladder sunk into the water, which smelled disgusting. I knew I couldn't climb down that. Maybe I could find a way to drain the putrid water. I forgot. I, I thought it wouldn't let me in, so I just clicked on it. A kitchen knife covered in drying blood. Thinking about it made me sick. I didn't even want to touch it. Did I take the knife? No. I was relieved to leave the filthy knife right where I found it. Me too. Doors locked. I'm just making sure there's nothing else in here besides this pipe. Here we go. I wasn't sure, but I thought it was some kind of regulator. I had no idea how it worked. Through the dust, I could see handprints from previous use, probably from whoever worked in these sewers. I'll do the commentary in just one second. All right. You know, it's funny. Even today, some players get tripped up at what to do here. But if you look closely, you'll see the answers are right there on the wall. Yeah, it actually has. So this goes to the right, and there's a tiny pixel on the right of the diagram back there by the four. And then over here, it's to the left. There's a tiny pixel on the left of the circle. Probably easier to see on a big screen. Maybe if you play on Vita, it might be might be hard to see. I don't know. I don't remember because I, I know the I knew the puzzles by the time I played it on Vita, so I never uh, worried about it. All right. If you remember, there were two locked doors, so we'll come back to those. Looked like the water drained out of that grate in the wall. There was a small metal key left floating. Did I take it? Yes. No idea what it led to, but we will take it. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna grab some more keys here in a minute. The safety poster had definitely seen better days. How old was that facility? The faded paper was yellow and dusty, but there it had obviously been wiped off recently. Okay, let's go in here. Oh, okay, maybe it's not that one. Maybe I gotta go up here first. I don't remember. Yeah, it's here, I think. Another dead body, a sewer worker. He was a mess, but he looked like he'd been stabbed. Could see a key ring. Take it. I worked up the nerve to snatch the key ring away and put it in my own pocket. I was feeling even more sick from seeing another dead man. I didn't want to get any more blood on my clothes. There was a security camera in the room. There must have been a way to see what had happened. I couldn't help but wonder if someone was watching me from the other side. All right, so now, before we continue on through that door, we're gonna go back and find the locked doors. I used the key ring to unlock the door. The shelf full of security tapes was strictly organized, though covered in dust. Must have been old if they were still using VHS. Odd, one of the tapes was missing. I wondered where the other tape was. Check that one other 
The security desk was dusty and there was a dirty coffee cup there. The VCR looked like it still worked. But if you play horror games, you can probably guess the inspiration for this. Alright, so let's go find the other locked door. Or doors. I don't remember how many there are. Just one, I think. There we go. All right, now. Collection of stale liquor bottles covered the floor. That room didn't seem like much of a place for drinking. What was the point? The wall was littered with dozens of old faded papers. Whoever did this was obsessed with some local murders. According to some of the clippings, bodies had been found in ravines in the forest and in one case, dumped in the back of an abandoned truck. I couldn't be sure, but I thought some of these same articles had also been pasted up back in those tunnels. Did that sewer worker find this room? Is that why he was killed? A faded receipt was half trampled on the floor. It was from the local train station and was for two tickets. I didn't know what use it could be, but did I keep the receipt? No. This was another room that we added over time. It's the setup for another new area later on. The sound design for this was really fun. We wanted to make it feel really uncomfortable. Alright. Wait, I did go in this room, right? Yeah, this is number one. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> I love that. That little startle you get there. You should have done a little commentary on that, but I guess he answered it with the, uh, the thing about the jump scares in a previous commentary. I could smell a hint of fresh air here. Was I close to the exit? I was anxious to leave, especially after seeing what I had, but was there more? This must have been the other end of that ventilation shaft. Whoever used it could have gotten past that flooded room with this. Clever, but why go through all the trouble? I moved slowly up each slippery rung of the ladder. My leg throbbed with each step. Who hid all those newspaper clippings away in that locked room? I held onto the ladder with one hand while I fumbled around in the dark, finally catching a heavy latch above me. With it open, I heaved a sturdy lid aside, and the musty scent of pine trees rushed toward me. Hear how nice and quiet it is? This was a major sound design decision. From the house, to the tunnels, to the sewers, the game's sound gets more and more overbearing. Then when you get here, you feel relief because it finally lets up. I was looking for the rung of the ladder, but I think it's in the next scene. There it is. An old ladder leading up to an ancient water tower. Did I extend the ladder? Yes. Here we go. Let's see the bats! There's the bats! Stay away, you rabid creatures. Creatures with There's rabies. There's a here at the top of the water tower for a reason. Originally, we were going to include a puzzle where you had to push something through the hole. It didn't make sense in the end, so we removed it, but kept the sprite here the same. Okay, see those claw marks? There's an amazing story about these things. When we first showed off Home to Press at GDC in 2012, someone was convinced that the game was really about werewolves. We had never thought of that, so we added in more claw marks and hints to support that theory. <laughs> that was our first indication that players were going to start making up their own stories about what was going on. In a patch of smeared dirt and grass, there was a beat up old wallet. I thought it was mine. Did I take it? Yeah. Wallet was missing ID or cards, but it had a bit of cash in it. I slid it into my back pocket, wondered where my credit card and driver's license were. From the railing, I could see over the woods and down to the entrance to the sewers. Had I come through there before? If I did, someone definitely could have seen me. It was getting cool up there, and I shivered with an uneasy sense of what was to come. How did I get home from here? Did I put this up here, or was somebody else carrying it?
players often think the scribble here says poison, but the truth is I just randomly wrote some nonsense to make it look like graffiti. So there you go, not poison. Can I go through that? Tried the little key I'd fished out of the murky puddle in the sewers. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what opens that. The wind was picking up a bit. The night air had become strangely chilly. Should I go explore this way or should I go this way? Hmm. I got... I don't know. I feel like I'm going to get locked off of one area. Let's go... Let's go this way first, I guess. The train yard was a completely new area we added in several months after home first came out. We didn't tell anyone that it was there, just that if players paid attention they could find new places like this. I don't know what it is about train yards that are so fascinating. I guess it's just that you shouldn't be there, so they have this weird mysterious appeal to them. The old train station was quiet as a tomb. The only sound was that of the increasing wind buffeting the decrepit structure. Whoops. Sorry. My bad. That was my fault. Entirely my fault. Alright, there's a door over there. Let me see what's this way. A door. Alright, well. Here we go. An old map encased in glass hung on the wall. It was the train routes connected to that old station. As I looked at it, it seemed familiar. Of course, the map I found in those tunnels had similar locations marked, and the notes I found on the other man's bookshelf. His notes mentioned the water tower and even this train yard. What was he doing, coming back here? The sorry condition of that place seemed sad somehow, but also ominous. Oh, we're out of the train station now. What you see here depends on whether you took the gun, the knife, or both. Little details like this are meant to show that you are, in fact, writing your own story. And I didn't take the gun or the knife. The ancient ticket booth was falling apart and covered in dust and grime. Stacks of paper lined the counter, faded remains of old schedules and reports. Among the papers were newer-looking sheets covered in scribbles and illegible notes. Come to think of it, the man in that house had kept similar scribbles hidden on his bookshelf. And he had notes on the water tower outside, too. I guess he could have been coming here, but why? What was he using this old station for? I couldn't be sure why the man had come to the station, but it seemed obvious that he had. Oh, well. Feels like all overwhelmed. This must have been the entrance to the forest that was mentioned on that map I'd seen. Whoever was poking around in those tunnels and underneath that man's house had scribbled notes on this place, but. I couldn't make them out. Here, the sign pointed out various campsites and walking paths within the woods. It mentioned a river and maybe a washroom, but the rest was too faded to see clearly. I almost wished I had paid more attention to those crazy scribblings. Maybe I would have been less nervous about entering that dark forest. Have you noticed that all the text in the game is written in the past tense? This is actually home's major defining difference, but it wasn't always done this way. Originally, the game was written in the current tense so your character was describing what he was doing at the time. Then a writer friend suggested changing this. As soon as we did, the game became darker, more sinister, and more interesting to play. Since the narration is past tense, it gives a sense of dread, since you know you're building towards something, but you don't know what it is yet. Oh, that's how we can go through the bushes, so we have two of those. Alright, I'll take the first one first. I always get lost in the woods here. 
Trampled into the dirt and grass was a plastic card of some kind. I brushed it off and was surprised to see it was my credit card. Wasn't sure if it was still usable, but it was mine. Did I take it back? Yep. Give me my credit card. All right, there's a way back there. Through the fence, I could see a dilapidated outbuilding. I wondered if I could find my way around. I don't know. All right, so there's a way to go there. That's the way we came in. And there's nothing over there, so let's go through here. There's one back there. All right. There was a fire pit there. It was still a bit warm and a few embers still burned at the bottom. Was someone else out in these woods? Why did they abandon their campsite? Two folding camping chairs were on the ground. One was knocked over. There were a couple of cans of beer spilled on the ground. Whoever was here left this place in a hurry, but why? I used to go camping with my dad when I was a kid. This entire creepy scene and the sounds of footsteps off in the bush were taken from those trips. The cheap dome tent slept two people. I shone my flashlight inside and could see some bedrolls, two backpacks, and a cooler. I felt like if I kept rooting through the campsite, someone would walk in on me. Alright, so we came through the second one, and there are three total. So I'll go through the first one. I don't remember where any of these lead, I'm just... Back in the 80s, I remember finding campsite restrooms really unsettling, which is why this is here. Well, we made it to the building. The grimy sink had a small patch in it that looked almost clean. There wasn't much in the way of clean water there, but the sink did work. A musty wooden plank propped up the stool. Ah, sorry, I got something in my eye. Hold on. Why does my eye itch? There's something in there. Ah! Propped up the stall door. It didn't really seem useful. Did I take it? Yes. I think we need that later. Washroom stall was filthy and disgusting. I wanted to get away as quickly as possible. Yeah, I think we need that board later, so I'm going to take it. Alright, did we come through the first one or the second one? I think it was the first one. Alright, I think we made it to the end. Maybe. Same as the first one. This one must be the exit. Okay, so we found the exit. Alright, hold on. Let's go back. Alright, so we went through that. We went through this. We've been through that one. What was through here? There were some personal effects shoved back into the rock. Wait, there was a notebook there too. Did I read it? Yeah. Inside the cheap dollar store notebook was page after worn page of names and lists. None of it made much sense. The newest page contained several names. Rachel. Her name was last on the list and had a mark beside it in blue ink. The names Daphne and Olivia had been crossed out in the same blue ink. Cheryl, Heather, and Rose had also been crossed out, but these marks looked older and more faded. Who were all these names? I could only think about how much I needed to get home to make sure Rachel was okay. This list of names, which you can also see in the desk back in the tunnels, has a theme. All of the names are based on plants or flowers. I guess we figured if there was a serial killer going around, he'd have a pattern. You'll notice that not all the names are crossed out, suggesting that some targets hadn't been dealt with yet. One of them is Holly, who just so happens to be the star of our next horror game, Worse Than Death. Yeah, nice. I'm going to get lost again. Uh, hold on. Okay. Now we can take the second one. The worn picnic table stood within a circle of trees like an altar. It was covered in faint markings and carvings from who I assumed were previous campers and hikers. I read some of the names and notes on the table surface. Seemed like the table had seen a lot of use over the years. Oh, maybe this is where we cross over.
Two bodies, two young women, were half dug into a hasty, shallow grave between the trees. The younger looking one was still face up, her dead eyes gleaming against my flashlight. They deserve better than that. Did I clean up the gravesite? No, we don't want to disturb it. Uh, I left everything right where it was. The police can sort it out. Oh, okay, it didn't. Uh, no. Okay. Even I thought the shallow grave was pretty dark. Seeing the grave, though, affects several other things in the forest and how the player might perceive what's going on. Alright. So there you go. That's our way over there. Yes. Let's cross back over. I knew there were bodies in the forest. I just couldn't remember where they were. Alright. Um, let me think now. How do I get back where I was. Um, this is kind of where we started. Where's number three take me? I don't remember. That's to the rock. Okay, so I gotta go in number one again and work my way around. Okay, so it goes here. And then here we go. The forest started to thin out a bit, and through the trees I could make out parts of the town beyond in the first tints of light. The mysteries of that forest were behind me, but I could still feel them on my neck like a warm breath. Those girls I had found, someone had taken them from their campsite and had murdered them. Was it the same person who had left that odd notebook? I was even more eager to get somewhere safe and to find a way to reach Rachel. As I stepped through the gate, I suddenly recognized the auto parts factory where I had worked as a machinist for all those years. The plant had closed almost three years ago now. Times were better then. thought I could hear a faint rustling behind me. Maybe it was just the wind. She's like the wind. Through the trees. I don't know. She's like the night. I found the body of a security guard just doing his job, no doubt. His face was covered with blood from some kind of head wound. I wondered, was this flashlight his? I saw the blunt wound on the guard's head and looked again at the flashlight I was carrying. Oh no, please. <laughs> All right. Fun fact. This scene you're looking at right now has been used for so many promotional images for home. Mm -hmm. We've used it as physical release, cover art, store promotion, you name it. In each of those cases, we just took a screen capture of the spot and blew it up. Dug into the ground was a cracked old watch. First my wallet, and now this. Did I retrieve my watch? Yes. I want all the evidence that I was here. I wish I could remember. Why was all my stuff missing? Take all my stuff. Leave none of my stuff behind. This is the first point in the entire game where there is no ambient sound. The goal was to make the factory seem much more threatening because of the silence. This is one of those cases where we thought less is more when it came to sound design. Silence of the lambs. One of the lockers hung open. Its contents were tossed around like someone had been looking for something. Old work clothes had been picked through and a few photos and notes had been ripped off the door and spread around. Alright, let's see here. I can't go through there because this is locked. Power box. Mm, closed for repairs. All right. Guess we gotta go upstairs and get the power turned back on. Every part of this plant smelled old and rotted. I noticed the old bulletin board on the wall. Whoops. I thought I was gonna get more text. My bad. That's my fault. That's me being dumb. Our old break table. The layer of dust and grime only made seeing this sting more. Looked like some beer bottles had been used on the table recently. I wondered, was that guard using this as a break room of his own? Maybe. The board contained yellowed clippings of newspaper cartoons and notices. There were notes to and from the guys that worked here. One of them was to Norman, who was one of the older guys on the line. Norman took over a general store after the factory closed. He, Rachel, and I would get lunch every now and then. 
Rachel liked him because he seemed more positive despite the setback. I don't think I could say the same about me. Hey, that one's on. The open locker was stuffed with dirty work clothes and old boots. There was a photo of a woman taped to the inside, but it was scratched out and the face was unrecognizable. That woman's photo. I knew I had to get back to Rachel to find out what happened. Okay, switch on. Okay, we need a card reader for that one. So we gotta try to remember where that's at. Okay, we gotta get some something to get some boards off. This was Norman's locker. The door was dented like someone had punched it. I don't remember him doing that when we worked there. My head ached and I recalled the last time Norman, Rachel, and I all had lunch together. Rachel seemed so much more at ease when we all hung out. Utility shelf crammed with mismatched tools and items. There was a claw hammer. Did I take it? Yes. I noticed it wasn't as dusty as the rest of the tools on the shelf. We'll do the door with the claw hammer shortly. The locker was a complete mess. Hidden at the bottom, though, was a magnetic card. Did I take it? Yes. I'll take the card. I hear power. I hear power. I struck with the hammer. The old wooden boards came apart easily. After I'd removed the planks, I left the hammer on the floor. This was my locker there in the factory. It stank of booze. There was a picture of Rachel on the inside. It looked like it had been torn up. I thought I had taken that picture home when the factory closed. There was a mess of empty booze bottles. I wondered if that man in the house had something to do with this. He sure had a lot of alcohol at this place. Maybe that guard outside caught him hiding up, hiding up here. Maybe. Maybe, 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 please don't worry. The door opened now that the power was back on. Another smudge of dirt similar to the one I found in those sewers was on the floor. It didn't look like the footprints were mine, but they were probably too faint to tell. Here's yet another new area we added to the game well after its initial launch. Since you looked at the dirt on the floor and the sewers, there's something else in here to give you more ideas. Okay. There was a bunch of debris blocking the way. That's all it was. Rusted old regulator sat dusty and unused against the wall. There were deep scratches, like from the tool of some blade. And it looks like this part's sealed up, too. Power back on, door was unlocked. Yeah, go through. I pushed the handle and stepped through the door. A rack of flashlights hung on the wall. One of them was missing. Wait a minute. They were exactly the same as the flashlight I was carrying. I turned my own over and looked at the bottom. Judging by the label, it definitely could have come from that rack. Oh, sorry. Ah, dang it. I keep clicking on it. Sorry. It's my bad. Something over there. The stale scent of the old factory gave way to the brisk odor of pine trees and dirt. I was back outside, though. I wasn't sure if that was better or worse. The path beyond was dark, and my flashlight barely illuminated anything. I wondered if it had really been taken from the factory. If so, how did I get it? That poor guard. 
He was probably just doing his job. Maybe he knew what was going on in that boarded up room. If he did, he wouldn't be telling that tale to anybody. I hope the path led back into town. I needed to find some help. A pickup had smashed into the guardrail and stood silent. Was this the truck that those newspaper clippings mentioned? Was there really a body found here too? I looked closer at the tailgate and could see a series of dried streaks down its back. Inside the truck was dried blood and broken glass. I was surprised this hadn't been towed away yet. What can I say? I grew up in small towns, so I needed to put a pickup truck in the game. What it says here depends on whether you looked at that big newspaper on the wall back in the sewers. The garbage bin was a disgusting mess of rotten food and slick black bags. I saw a thin greenish corner poking out from one of the bags. It was my driver's license. I took it back. I cleaned the card off as best I could. It looked pretty beat up. I was amazed to have found my credit card and now this. I tucked the card into my wallet next to my credit card. Did somebody steal this from me? I wondered why they would have stashed it there. Sounded like it was going to start raining again. I had entered Norman's place. This was the back of the store that he ran. It was oddly quiet except for the faint sound of a television. Mm. The entrance was locked from the inside. I needed a key. Okay. What the hell? One of Rachel's old autumn coats hung on a rack. That was Norman's bedroom, wasn't it? What was this doing there? Speck of something dark and wet stained one of the sleeves. Maybe it's hard to see because it's super low res pixel art, but check it out. That's an image of the water tower level. Hmm. <laughs> there was a well maintained gun cabinet here in Norman's room. I didn't know much about guns, but it looked like he kept a few hunting rifles, and maybe even a few pieces he shouldn't have. One of the guns was missing. I knew Norman hunted occasionally, but I didn't know him to be such a collector. The gun collector. Oh, okay. Can't look at the blood. What was this? It looked like a pull chain hanging from the ceiling. Did I pull the chain? Not yet. We'll pull it in a second. TV still flickered some indecipherable channel. I couldn't make out what was on the screen, but that glow just gave me the chills. Oh no, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Norman, my co-worker and one of the few friends I had in this town, lay dead beside his, his armchair. His face and shirt, hold on, were covered in blood. It looked like he'd been killed trying to get up. His eyes were still wide with shock. Norman, what was Rachel doing here? Why did you have her coat? Norman, maybe you deserved better. You probably did. Did I close his eyes? Nah. I don't think I ever told him, but Norman is named after one of my uncles. Sorry, Uncle Norm. Uh-huh. <laughs> I guess this was Norman's kitchen table. He kept it clean enough, but there were water rings from two cups still there in the wood. I'd never been to Norman's place before. At least I didn't remember ever doing so. Kitchen trash bins smelled fresh. Yeah, I dig through it. Let's see. A hairpin. So we got a hairpin. All right. Let's see what we got here. Does it take me? B okay. I was just curious if there was any text on it. Couldn't remember. There was a large cardboard box. Yeah, open it. 
I opened up the old cardboard box and wasn't entirely surprised by what I saw. There were more of Rachel's things, more of my wife's clothes. Photos, shoes, even that old radio I gave her. Why, Rachel? What were you doing here with Norman? I just couldn't believe it. My head ached with everything that was running through it. They was getting it on. And he tied her up up here with these, uh, whatever, stirrups. They were into some, uh, grays. What is it? What's that book called? Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey. Shades of Grey. Use the hairpin. The general store was small, but it was clean. It had the usual things, postcards, snacks, magazines, and canned goods. I never went there much. Rachel usually stopped by after work if we needed anything. The register was mostly empty, and a fat stack of travel magazines sat beside it. Were you thinking of going somewhere with Rachel, Norman? Probably. The fact that Norman runs a convenience store is from growing up in a small town. I took a lot of trips to corner stores, as we call them in Canada, for snacks, drinks, and comic books. Yeah, me too. The icebox seemed to be unplugged. It must have been off for a while. Most of its contents were half melted. What was the matter, Norman? Cheated on your hydro bills, too? There were various postcards from the area, especially from the tourist traps. One of the postcards showed an old black and white photo of the water tower. It looked to be in much better shape then. Of all the postcards, that one seemed to be the most popular. There were only a few left. That night continued to take horrible turn after horrible turn. It had been weeks since I'd last seen Norman, but to find him like that... Who could have done that to him? Seeing that dusty box of those old clothes was a shock. How long had they been there? What was Rachel doing at Norman's place? I felt like I had only discovered more questions, no answers, but I was close to home. It was time to find out the truth. Oh, oh. oh yeah, it's like the 20th gate or something. <laughs> no, it's not the 20th one, but it's, it's pretty far up here, I think. Is it this one? Is this it? Hold on. I want to keep going. Oh, no! I forgot it locks when you... Damn it. Ah, oh, it's my bad. The neighbor's, neighborhood's local post box. The letter was sticking out as if someone hadn't pushed it all the way in. Did I look at the letter? Yeah. Envelope addressed to Norman. I took a deep breath and tore it open. Sending this to you in a letter because I'm afraid to tell you this in person. What we did, it was wrong. My husband isn't an easy man to be with. But he is my husband and your friend. I need some time to sort this out away from you both. Going away for a while, I'm going to tell him, Norman. So don't you, th don't you think you can hold that against me? Maybe we'll work it out. I'm not sure I even want to, but he deserves at least that much. This is a very Canadian post office box. Alright, I think it was that one with the blood beside it. I had entered our backyard. The rain gave me a terrible sense of foreboding, and it chilled me through my clothes. I was expectant, but also afraid. I held my breath as I approached my... our backyard. I was terrified to step inside. Hear that? That's the sound of something terrible heading your way. What you may not remember is that the sound first appears back at the end of the tunnels just before you enter the sewers. That little teaser is meant to set you up for hearing the sound again right here, so you know something bad is coming. Something wicked this way comes. The house was painfully quiet. The only sound was my own breathing, ragged and strained. I flicked the light switch by the door. The power was off. I remembered having breakfast here on this very table. Was that yesterday or sometime before? The table was clean. It hadn't been used any time recently. Wait, what? It hadn't been used any time recently. Oh, okay, I see. It's clean because it hadn't been used. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. If it hadn't been used recently, wouldn't it have, like, dust or something? But All right, we're not going to go in the basement yet. I don't even know if we can. There's a small pile of mail on the floor in front of the mail slots. How long had I been away? Why hadn't Rachel picked this up? Most of the contents were bills. There was a credit card bill. I ripped the bill open and read it. To my surprise, it said something about canceling my credit card due to non-payment. What the hell? Oh, excuse me. Sorry. 
front door was locked. Okay. Ah, why am I getting the hiccups or something? Can I go in the basement? Okay. I need the key first. All right. Door was stuck. Old fashioned keyhole. Old fashioned keyhole. I had found the last missing piece from my wallet. The old photo of Rachel and I stared back at me, reminding me of better times. Didn't make me feel terribly comfortable. Yeah, keep it. Got to complete the wallet, man. Our television. I had purchased it before I knew I was going to lose my job. Felt pretty guilty about it afterward, but by then it was too late. Rachel was pretty angry about that, I realized. Hey, what's that hooked up to the TV? What a familiar little purple box. <laughs> yeah. GameCube. Nice. The books there were half mine, half Rachel's. Hey, now that I looked more closely, it looked like the man in the house had some of the same books as I did. One book in particular seemed a bit odd. I remembered owning it, but not that edition. My wife's. Rachel's suitcase was sitting on the bed. It was closed, but I had a feeling what was in it. Did I open it? Rachel's suitcase contained clothes, toiletries, and a train ticket. Is this what you were going to do with Norman? Rachel, why? Were you really going to run away with Norman? Was I really such a monster? I'm friends with a monster inside of my... I don't know. Is it head or bed? I don't know the lyrics. Our hallway mirror had been smashed, its pieces scattered around the floor. I couldn't really make myself out anymore. I wasn't sure I wanted to. Our sink, which needed to be replaced. One of the taps always stuck, but I hadn't got around to fixing it yet. That old house was charming for sure, but it wasn't always easy. We were lucky enough to get a house with one of those wonderful old claw-footed bathtubs. It seemed impractical, impractical at times, but it was part of what made the house home. Oh, because it feels like home. Look at that. Another image of the water tower. They're kind of all over the place within the game. This is our way of hinting that several characters in the game may have been at certain locations. My laptop had been left on and only had a tiny bit of power left. On the screen was a website about the old water tower. There was a key in the top drawer of my desk. I pocketed the key. The laptop was warm. It had been running for a while. I pocketed the key. I don't remember what to do with it. It's not, it doesn't go there. Alright, here we go. Dunk, 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 dunk. There were old Christmas decorations in the box. I couldn't even remember our last Christmas. The garbage bags were stuffed with old paint cans and supplies. There was a dirty old key here. Did I take it? Yeah. Take the dirty old key. Stick it in the dirty old keyhole. There's something about musty, cluttered basements that always seem really creepy. Note that this is the third time that you can go digging into trash bags for an important item. Do you remember where the other places were? Old clothes, tools, and other things we obviously hadn't thrown out yet. We had way too much junk. I had put up this divider wall last summer so we could create a separate room in the basement. I hadn't finished it yet, so the door was stuck and the drywall was poorly installed. Might have been able to break through if I found something heavy enough. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Grimy key unlocked the door. It looked like the room had been tossed around. The furniture was a mess. Did somebody break in here? There was an old crowbar on the floor. Did I take it? Yeah, of course, man. Let's take it. Let's take the crowbar. There's the wa there's the water tower again. Crowbar I found would have been strong enough to bust through that cheap wall. Did I break through? Yup. 
smash the hole large enough to step through. As I stepped through the broken wall, my breath caught in my throat. This was it. Was Rachel down here? Was she okay? I mean, if you had to break through, I mean, you, you kind of probably know the answer to that. The sound design in this room was really important. We wanted you to feel a terrible sense of anticipation here. If you look in the gallery mode, you'll also notice that this room was originally going to be in the attic, but in the end, descending into a dark basement seemed to make more sense thematically. Filthy looking pile of rags had been dumped in the corner. The stench of them was awful and made my eyes water. I was terrified to even touch the pile to see what lay within, but I knew I had to. I had come this far. After all this searching, after all I had seen, when I looked within the rags, did I finally find Rachel? Yes. Of course you did. She's there. She's dead. She's in them. It was worse than I could have possibly imagined. Within the folds of that rotten, smelling, heavy fabric was the pale, dead figure of my darling wife. What struck me most was that she wasn't bloody or torn apart. Rather, she was covered in sickly green bruises and her windpipe had been crushed. The real horror there was that whoever had killed her had done so intimately with bare hands. So this is what had been gnawing in the back of my mind this whole time. This is what I was afraid of. I thought about all I had seen and wondered if any of it could help me figure out who had done this. And when I couldn't stay there any longer, I stepped away on shaky legs and made my way back upstairs. Reluctantly, exhausted from my journey, I could no longer resist the urge to close my eyes. And if I close my eyes forever, will it all remain the same? If I close my eyes forever, will it all begin? Change. It's my wallet. Maybe you were sleepwalking. Norman Store, was I at this place? Yeah, yeah, man. You must have been the one. But what does it all like you mean? you chose to say that you found Rachel. How unfortunate. <laughs> Did you notice how the description referred to items that you were carrying? Depending on what you do or don't pick up throughout the game, this changes, of course. Now, some players take this to mean that you are definitely guilty, but that's just one interpretation. I don't know. You're going to notice that items you picked up while playing the game appear here. In some games, what you take manipulates endings completely behind the scenes. But in Home, it let you make choices depending on these items that you found. It was always meant to get players talking to each other about what they did or didn't do. All right, um, I'm trying to think of what actually what I actually need to click on to proceed. The key card. Oh, I forgot to use the key card. No, wait. I thought I did. Had I been going? Yeah, you were drinking there. Yeah, you were the one drinking at the factory. Um, yeah, I think he was. Yep. That was your hiding spot. The guard found you. You killed him. Just like you killed your wife. I guess maybe we can go to the kitchen table now. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. It's been a while since I did this. I'll come back upstairs if I'm not correct about that. No more dinners, no more breakfast. Okay, maybe not. Can I go to the door? I don't remember what uh, what I'm supposed to do at this point. Let's see. Couldn't leave. I needed answers. All right, we'll go back upstairs a little bit more. This safe has a bit of a story. Before Home originally launched, we offered pre-orders for a homemade physical edition. Part of that physical edition was an envelope that said, Do not open until I tell you on it. The contents of the safe were in that envelope and only for players who ordered this edition. But when creating Home for Consoles, we wanted to make this letter available to everyone. My old office safe sat on the floor. I used to keep tax records and other important documents in it. 
used a digital passcode lock, but I didn't have the code. Maybe I left it somewhere. If I could find the code, maybe I could still open it. Uh, names, okay. All right, so we need the passcode to open the safe. No, he didn't do it. Seemed like I'd seen all there was. Maybe I thought I was ready to go back into the basement. Maybe there wouldn't be anything for me to find, but I had to at least take a look. Now that I stood there, I realized I couldn't go back into that room again. I'd already seen too much. Alright, fine. Let's go kill ourselves. Can I go to the kitchen table yet? Nope. Okay. I don't remember what I'm supposed to do next. Okay. Did I leave? Never to Hold on. I want to hear the director's commentary. This is the most common way players choose to finish home. But, if I'm being honest, it's my least favorite. I guess I prefer the other two more downbeat endings. Yeah, I didn't even know I could leave the house. Well, I tried the kitchen table, but it wouldn't let me kill myself, so... Where is the bathroom? Is it up here? Here it is. It won't let me kill myself. Do I need the key code before I can kill myself? I don't remember. I had made up my mind. There's a yellow sticky note with an eight digit code on it. Yes, take that. Okay, so we got that code. Now we can kill ourselves. Yes. There was a photo of Rachel and I when we had first moved to town. We were smiling, we looked happy. Inside the safe was also an envelope. It said, don't open until I tell you. I guess this was as good a time as any. Yes. Tore open the envelope, removed the yellow lined paper. It was a letter that read, I know this whole event's probably been pretty difficult. You can't imagine how hard it's been for me too. That isn't meant to be an excuse, but I hope you can get better. You can better understand why I've done what I've done. Moving to this town seemed like such a dream, a quiet place to get established, to live out our lives and to be together. But you know as well as I do that things quickly changed. Your drinking was one thing, but as you grew more distant, as you retreated into that world of yours, well, it was clear you didn't need me as much. In fact, maybe you never needed me at all, but it took all this to make you realize. In the end, though, you may never forgive me for this, you may never forgive yourself, but this is probably for the best. You'll be healthier for this. I'm just saying it had to happen this way. Rachel. This safe has a bit of a story. Oh, okay. Sorry. Before Home originally launched, we offered pre-orders for a homemade physical edition. Part of that physical edition. I know. I heard it. I heard it. All right. So, have I looked at literally everything so that I can... Uh, okay. I'm just clicking on everything again just to make sure... that I got everything. You're going to know. Uh, I did that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Looks like you chose to say that you Maybe I can't kill myself. Hmm. Wait, go in the room. Maybe I picked the wrong ending to kill myself. Maybe I screwed it up. I think I did. I don't know, I don't remember. 
I'll go. I'll try the basement one more time, and then we're leaving. All right, screw it. We'll go to the front door, and then maybe maybe that's the way you're supposed to do it. I don't know. Living in this town hadn't been easy. The plant had helped in some way to stay grounded. It kept me in line. Gave me something to do and helped me get away from the, my past. When the factory closed, everything changed. I guess that was when I'd started sleepwalking, disappearing for hours at a time. I had MRIs and piles of doctor reports, but nothing seemed to help, not even drinking. But I swear I had tried to give it up. I know it. The sleepwalking never really went away, though. I know Rachel had tried. I know she had tried to be there for me even when everything was falling apart. This night had unearthed terrible truths, but I knew it was a final act of a long-standing horror I'd been living. Waking up in that house tonight was the final cruelty. I wish I had remained unconscious in that room forever. Even the man I had found in that old place was a mystery. Why he was dead or who had done it to him was not something I could even begin to understand. Or why, for that matter, I was in that damn room in the first place. The body of that sewer worker that I had found still troubled me, too. I had no idea what had really happened to him. The fact that those tunnels lead directly to that facility made me wonder, though. I had found the contents of my wallet scattered throughout town. Why the hell had I been out there? Had my sleepwalking gone to some new extreme? The thought that I couldn't account for my whereabouts but knew I had been to that forest and even Norman's place, well, it was terrifying. I didn't know what that meant, but at least I had recovered my things. Hopefully I thought that would cover my tracks so I wouldn't be blamed for all this. Even more troubling were those poor girls I had found in those terrible woods. Half hidden in a shallow grave, their secret deaths seemed like the ultimate defiling. If I hadn't found them, would anyone have done so? Would they have been missed? I vaguely recalled the desk I'd seen in those tunnels, the names etched there. Someone had killed those girls. Was it that man? It was clear, at least, that I had been the one going back to that factory. I must have been sleepwalking or something, but what the hell was I doing there? I had given up drinking, hadn't I? So what was going on in that boarded up room? Suddenly my stomach started to turn. Was I responsible for that dead guard? After the factory, I thought I might find some solace if I could just get to Norman's store, but all I had found were more horrors and more questions. Now that I really consider it, that's when I should have seen it coming. Norman, what were you and Rachel up to? It was obvious things were more complicated than I'd ever imagined. How long had, had you been going behind my back? More importantly, why Norman? Whoever had killed Rachel had probably gone after you too. Maybe they knew about what you, what you were up to. I would never know peace, Norman, but despite your transgressions, a part of me really did hope that you would. When I had marched through the rain towards home, I desperately clung to the hope that this would end. And I guess in a way it did, but how could I have known how hopeless it all was? I had started to feel as disoriented as when I sleepwalked. To think of it now, our house used to feel so lively, so warm, but coming into the kitchen I felt only a cold, empty tension. Every terrible thought I had up to that point was suddenly a possibility, but nothing could have prepared me. My wife, dead, ruined, discarded. Rachel's death was a terrible mystery to me, one that would haunt me forever, unless I did something about it. For what solace can a man take in the death of his wife? What comfort can be offered? Rachel had been taken from me, and I might never know why. As I swung open the door and stepped out into the air, I caught the scent of wet grass and fog. Rachel, my beautiful wife, just the thought of her again, cold and inert, shook me from head to toe. What would I do now? Who would I turn to? It would only be a matter of time before the police got involved, before the neighbors knew. The front lawn was soft and giving beneath my feet, and I couldn't shake the urge that I shouldn't stand there, but rather that I should run. Nice. go nice ah, I gotta remember how to end this game properly it's been so long since I finished it all right well there you go guys that's home a unique horror adventure the new post-mortem edition that's out on Nintendo switch I hope you guys enjoyed that playthrough we'll be doing this 
excuse me, why can't I breathe? Uh, we'll be doing a speed run of this um, sometime in the next week. I'm not sure when because I'm still running Silent Hill 4, but uh, he put in a feature to skip through the text really fast, and that feature wasn't in the PS4 version or the PC version that I have, or if it was, it got patched out at some point, so it's hard to compete with the older speed run times. But now that it's back, uh, we will definitely be competitive with this version of the game. So I'm going to start speedrunning this version of the game. So that will be sometime within the next week from October 8th. So sometime by the 15th. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Look forward to more uh, speedruns for home. If you did like this video, tell that like button you want to smash. And don't forget to subscribe. You stay you. I'll stay me. Drew forever. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. And thank you, Benjamin Rivers, for this version of the game. I've bought this game on every platform it's been released on. And I'll buy it again when it comes out on PS5 and uh, Xbox Series X. See ya.